Today, gents, we have like one of the darkest whiskies I've ever I've ever seen, let That's alone true. tasted. This could be spectacular. Um, this is a Glen Grant, distilled in 1964, um, bottled by Italian importers and bottlers, Moon Import. Um, Moon, I mean, a legendary, a legendary, legendary. Kind of talked about in the same breath as Samaroli. Yes. Um, very much, you know, sourcing and bottling single malt Scotch whiskey before it was really a thing, yeah. particularly before it was a thing in Italy as well. So this is a 25-year-old expression, so this, I mean, these, yeah. this was a very new product to that market. Mm. Tell, tell us a bit about this label, Laurie, because this is a kind of yeah. bonkers label. So Moon Import were sort of, they, well, their thing, I suppose, is that they, so it was Pep Mongiardino, mm -hmm. who was kind of founder, visionary behind Moon Import. He took a lot of inspiration from sort of old books they stumbled across, so sort of encyclopedias and these sorts of things. Um, and a lot of his bottlings were grouped into series. So there was, you know, a costume series, which had all these sort of antique, old-fashioned, you know, clothing designs. Um, there was animal series, the bird series as well. Um, some of the older series contained some absolutely stunning bottles with ridiculous age statements and vintages. Um, I imagine late 1980s, you know, casks of 20-odd-year-old Glen Grant Probably relatively easy to get hold of, I think. Definitely not commanding the sort of premiums that mm. that, and that sort of stock will command these days. Um, Glen Grant as a distillery, Ross, it's one you've had a few yeah, times. Yeah, enough. absolutely. Yes. Nowadays, modern bottlings, they do um, mostly American oak, uh, which I really enjoy. They do a lot of fresh, um, creamy kind of style spirit and, and expressions. Um, Malcolm Dennis has been kind of in charge of producing some of the most fantastic spirit out of, out of space side from the yeah. Glen Grant distillery for such a long period of time. Um, now, the reason I'm so excited about this is this is an Italian import of Glen Grant. Mm. And honestly, when I think Glen Grant, I do think of Italy. It's now owned by Campari yeah. and really is the, it's, a, it's the number one single malt in Italy. Um, but yeah, Malcolm Dennis and what he's done over, over the generations there is quite remarkable as well, Charlie. I'm sure you've come. Oh yeah, Malcolm is a great, great man. But the interesting thing is that the, the, it was perceived the, the Italian market was the biggest market for malt whiskey ever, mm. and it been long before Scotland, mm. um, in the uh, 60s, 70s, largely driven by Gordon and McPhail, actually. Okay. George Urquhart and the... Um, but the, uh, there was Samaroli and Moon and others took on, mm. and they could get fantastic whiskey. So the, 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 the Italian malt whiskey market really was the original mm. malt whiskey market in those days. And the, 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 this, this is a very curious one because the, the, one of the main drivers um, of the, in, in the Italian market was a distributor for, for Glen Grant, actually, um, who went for pale and young, pura malta, pura claro, and the um, um, Armando Giovanetti and the... Um, um, and the, the, by the 1980s, certainly, by, I would guess by about 1980, um, you know, Glenn Grant commanded you know, about 80% yeah, of the Italian... Yeah, even Italian a five-year-old expression, right, that would buy exactly. directly into that style. Exactly. It was a pale five-year-old that would be, I suppose for a hotter climate as well, yeah. really approachable. Famously as well, Giovanetti also did a seven-year-old Macallan. That's Which right. Comes up at he, auction every now and then. That was he, pretty much he, just for the Italian market. Exactly, because yeah. he then switched when Glen Grant became part of Seagram's. He, he, he uh, you know, Giovanetti and his company moved to Macallan, mm, yeah. and they did exactly the same seven and five. I think they yeah, yeah. Yeah. for Macallan built Macallan in the Italian market, and the. Uh, but this is an, an, an extraordinary survivor, if you like, from the pre pale yeah. uh, 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 mm -hmm. as, as we were talking earlier the, the Glen Grant is now a very pale um, light style of whiskey which which um, you know appeals to the Italian market and, and is, is, is offered to the but the 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 earlier ones and I, this is not the first that I've mm. seen mm. at this color I've never tasted this whiskey very dark very rich and the yeah. um, and it's it's it, 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 it. I'm so looking forward to tasting it. And bottled in '89. And, and and distilled in 1964. So I mean, it's been in yeah, it's been in the bottle for 35 years. 
So the fact that we get the opportunity to taste it today is, yeah. is extraordinary. It is a survivor, as you've said. Yeah. Um, right, we better get this well, open. And, and the, 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 uh, oh, we should report back to Dennis Malcolm. The, yes, the, 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 the uh, or I hope you might see it. Dennis Malcolm is the, is of course the- The, the master, the master blender or master distiller. Master distiller for, for, for centuries at, at <laughs> and Grant Distillery. I think you'll find it's a screw cap. Is it? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh no, it, it, is, is, it, is, it is. It is. What a, it is cork. is uh, not that? obviously. <laughs> I'll give it to what, what what is, under there. Yeah, I might say it's got a very good level. I must. Yeah, say. a good fill level. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're better. And those old Italian tax strips as well. It's just, it's amazing we managed in 2024 to sample liquid from from 64. Oh, I mean that's. 60 years oh, ago. I mean, what it's a, just what a, what a privilege. Outstanding. Really. Okay. Now, were you born in 1964? Unfortunately, I was 65, Charlie. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those you things. Were, you well and well. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. No, surprise, surprise. Oh, I am fed up with this. No. <laughs> bring, bring in the expert. Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, ready for the whiskey to be full of cork. Now, we know we've got an authentic product because it has failed on us. Now, I, I understand after 35 years in the bottle, we don't know how this has been stored. We've bought it on an auction. But this real thing, the... Uh... It's crumbling. Right. I've not managed to do very well here, gentlemen. No, Laurie, you... you're going to have to filter oh. that when you get home. But again, we're still... Well, we're we're still, still, I'm still, I'm still get, yeah, I'm sure we've still managed to, to, get, to test this 1964 Glen Grant. It's such... An inviting colour. It on the really, really is, and of course it it implies the the um, uh, European oak maturation. Yeah, I thought it was interesting looking at the label. It says matured in sherry wood, which I know isn't a phrase uh, that you. That's right. You're not a huge fan of. Really. Well, no, because it's misguiding, because the sherry transport casks in these days were American oak. Mm -hmm. um, all, although it, they might be, because there was a switch to European oak um, sometime during the 1960s. So this, the, I would think, but well, we can tell by the taste, the, mm. the G and, and the nose, the dryness, tannic dryness, whether it was European oak or whether it was yeah. um, um, so-called, um, well, they, they're all sherry oak, but whether European oak or, or, or American Or American. Oak. I didn't mean to pour quite as much. I do apologise. Yes. <laughs> I'm not think, complaining, don't worry. Keep it going, boy. <laughs> what do, what do Where, think, where's the rest of it? What do you think of the nose? I mean, loads of tannins. I mean, it's... it's. But it's also, it's also cherry liqueur chocolates. It's yeah, like... It's like it's blackberries for me, it's very, very lovely. Indulgent, yeah, blackberries, Laurie, yeah. Almost gâteau then, it really yeah, is, that yeah, kind yeah. of... Um, 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 black forest gâteau. Mm. Mm. It's a, it's a lovely, but it is dry, isn't mm. it? Let's give this a go, gentlemen. Mm. Cheers, a, an mm. absolute pleasure. I know, what a treat. It's like a, a little bit of liquid pudding history. in a glass. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. European oak, mm. very dry, spicy at the end. But gorgeous. Yeah, it's exactly. absolutely got depth. Mm. Coffee, espresso coffee. Oh, dark Le chocolate, Le leather. Dark chocolate. Yeah, mm. layers and layers. This would be great with a cigar. Yeah, which <laughs> I think one of those drafts. <laughs> I, I think this is a whiskey you, you've described before to me, Laurie, as quite a guilty pleasure whiskey. Mm. I, I'm, I would like to say that I don't think I could go back for a second. I think I definitely could. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's so rich and indulgent and Moorish, but still very sweet at the front of the palate and so dry at the back of the palate. But I mean, that's it's, it's a, again, we were talking about it, just, um, you could not begin to identify the distillery. No, no absolutely. Gi no. Given, given what we know, <laughs> no, it, spot it, on. this is for, this for is Grant, a yeah. high quality European transport cask that could cold any spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's bloody tasty, gentlemen. And what, 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 what is the sportling strength? Uh, it's 46%. 46%. Which is fantastic. Mm. I mean, 
again, it wasn't always the case of these import bottles. We've seen quite a lot of kind of calculated 45% strength. Mm. Um, but I mean, a 25 year old single malt bottled for Italy in 89. I imagine it still would have been a real whiskey connoisseur slash drinker enthusiast that would have been looking for this kind of thing. Also, in a hot climate, this is not the kind of whiskey I no. think of whatsoever. I think if I was having a dram of this, I wouldn't really want to be... In Italy. In Italy. <laughs> sweating. I, 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 to I totally agree with you. This is, this is a winter dram. This is around, you know, around but, a fire. But, you know, the, the, I think that Moon and, to some extent, Samaroli, um, they, because the, the first collectors in the world were Italian, mm. and the, these are the sort of co serious connoisseur bottlings that w mm. went went to collectors, and and, and as, as I was saying earlier on, they, they they would buy well in these cases buy two one for one for drinking and one for in their collection, yeah. and the um, um, the and and, and I, I don't know the thinking behind it because it's, but it's 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 an it's an absolutely beautiful whiskey, mm. and this was simply never available no. outside of probably outside of this bottling. Or I, I mean, I can't remember the ones that I bought from the man in the bar in in uh, in, um, in, the, in Blegari, but the the the. And you see, it would never be a G and M because they, they they supplied their own casks, mm. and they they would never put in a. A, 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 a fresh cask like that. Mm. You don't see any chain and bottlings that are no. so dark. No, you don't. You know? But it makes for this fascinating whiskey. Yeah. Really uh, decadent, isn't it? Decadent's a fantastic way to describe it. Really, really interesting. I, mean, say this, I think the silence almost tells there. That it's just it's, yeah, I think we're just quite quite content. Yes, like certainly, a, certainly yeah. nine out of ten. Mm. Yeah, and possibly slightly nine nine point four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we're getting yeah. generous, yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how much have you had, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, nine point four. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, an absolute pleasure to share this dram with you. What uh, an opportunity to look back at not only old whiskey but old Italian imports and and really fascinating insight from both of you about the history behind the bottlers as well. Yeah, big whiskey. Yeah. But oh, I've, I've still got <laughs> I the other half pint there Ross poured me. <laughs> it is a 9.4 after all. Help yourself, by all means. Cheers, gents. Cheers, gents. What a drum. Sancho, thank Sancho. you so you much. Help. So much. Thank you. Pleasure, That's Charlie. really kind. Well, a way to finish. We didn't do the bottling strength. What, 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 what was that doing? Uh, 46. Was that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks, perfect. <clears throat> perfect. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more bevy content. We want to hear what you think, your best whiskey experiences, the whiskies you want us to try. It's a really exciting journey we're on, so make sure to join us. Download the bevy app on Google Play and App Store to keep track of your whiskey journey, connect with your whiskey friends, keep track of your favourites, anything you could ever want to do with whiskey, all in one place. It's the definitive whiskey companion.